Okay, so I want to give you a little background on the history of logistic regression because uh, it's it's really fun. <laughs> anyway, so it starts with exponential growth, which is a, a, which was a good model, for instance, for the growth of say population in the United States at the time, right? But maybe it wasn't such a great model for different countries in Europe, which were starting to get kind of saturated. So anyway, um, so Ketelet and Verhulst, well, to be honest, it's mostly Verhulst. They were studying population growth and, and the growth of chemical reactions and so on. And then they realized, you know, these things saturate. And so they decided that they needed to have a term that would counteract growth. So in other words, the change in population over time needed, there needed to be something negative in there so that the population wouldn't continue to grow exponentially. So what they decided to do was to put in a term uh, to, to create uh, a model that looked like look like this one right here. So uh, the omega there is a saturation limit. So as the population W reaches that saturation limit, then the, the term on the right gets really, really small, right? It gets close to zero, which means the population growth, which is the term on the left, right? The, the change in population over time, that then becomes zero. So as you, you know, if W is hitting the population limit, then the growth is just zero. Okay, so that's the, that's the model. And these guys were really excited about this model and um, they were applying it to, to lots of different, different things. Um, let me just change variables really quickly so that we can get it into a kind of a slightly different form. Um, so I'm just gonna take uh, the population and divide it by its maximum. So now this P is the fraction of the maximum possible population. So I'll change variables, and uh, here the new beta is just the old beta divided by the omega. So um, apologies, I changed variables and didn't change the name of the variable, but hope hopefully you get the idea here. Okay, so here's our new equation, and then as PT approaches one, which is the saturation limit, uh, then the growth of the population goes to zero. All right, so they were really excited about this, and um, they solved it, and what do you, lo and behold, what do you get? You get the logistic function. And then alpha here is the constant of integration. All right, so they had a lot of fun applying this, actually, well, just Verhulst, um, had a lot of fun applying this to different problems, and Verhulst published a bunch of papers on this. So the first paper was in 1838. He published a four-page paper that said that this curve agreed with the population of French France, Belgium, Essex, and Russia up to 1833. So look, I've got it, okay? He didn't say how he fitted the models to the data, but he claims that he, he did. And then in the second paper, which was in 1845, that's where he named it the logistic function. And that's where the name comes from. Okay, so in that paper, he fit the logistic function to three data points that were, that were comprised of you know 20 to 30 years of data and now you think about like the whole population growth of the whole country and everything like that and it's not clear that 20 to 30 years of data would be representative but um, but that's what he that's what he did and so he actually was able to use that data to make estimates of the saturation limit of a, of a country okay so I'll show you what he guessed. Okay, so for Belgium, he said that the saturation limit, like Belgium would be completely full at 6.6 .6 million people. And for France, he said 40 million people. Okay, so now, <laughs> does any, if you know, you know, you could, th could think about, okay, well, what's the current population of Belgium and what's the current population of France and how, how close were Verhulst's estimates? Well, maybe I'll leave that for homework. Mm, I can't resist. Okay, I'm just going to tell you the answers. So um, for Belgium, it's 11.5 uh, million people currently living in Belgium and 67 million for France. Okay, so his estimates were off. But um, to his... <laughs> um, just, just to benefit him a little bit, I can at least make the point that he did correct one of the estimates um, and he did get to... He changed it to 9.5 for 9.5 million for Belgium. So it actually wasn't that far off compared to Belgium's current 11.5 million. Okay, 
Uh, no. So um, Verholst's work, unfortunately, after that point, was just sadly forgotten uh, for quite a long time. Actually, it was just it just vanished, and you know, even though it was published, people didn't know about it. And so it was rediscovered by Raymond Pearl and Lowell Reed in about 1920, and they were modeling population growth of the United States and fruit flies and French colonies in North Africa and cantaloupes and anything else they could get their hands on. Okay, so uh, I should mention though that, um, okay, so let's talk about what they did, right? So they estimated a total saturation limit for US population at 197 million. Now, if you think about what the current population of the United States is, it's bigger than that. So not a great estimate, but at least they tried. Now, I should mention that Verhulst's work was actually, um, was actually rediscovered just after Pearl and Reed's first paper in 1920, but Pearl and Reed actually did not acknowledge Verhulst at all um, in their second paper, and only a footnote in the third paper by Pearl in 1922. And they cited him in 1923, but they didn't use his terminology, so they didn't use the term logistic function. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they called his papers long forgotten. Yeah, they always say that it's the last person to discover something rather than the first who gets the credit for it. Um, and in any case, the name logistic was revived in um, a, a presidential address to the Royal Statistical Society in 1925. And there was a lot of debate actually whether this, the logistic function, could replace the CDF of the normal distribution. Because if you think about it, the CDF of the normal distribution looks ex looks almost exactly like this, right? It's increasing and then uh, et cetera. So um, the only thing is dealing with the CDF of the the um, um, of the of the normal distribution is messy because you know there's no closed there's no closed form for it. Whereas this function is nice and neat, and you could just write it down. And so the person who really sort of pushed for the logistic function to be used instead of the CDF of the normal was this guy, Joseph Berkson, who um, was born in 1899 and died in 1982. And he was the chief statistician of the Mayo Clinic. But the problem was, and he was a collaborator of Reed's, the problem was that he had this really, like this personality that just made people want to do the opposite of what he suggested. And so he was pushing and pushing for the logistic function, but he was also attacking the method of uh, maximum likelihood, and he was attacking so many things that people just didn't want to do it. And so there was a lot of controversy that ensued, and it took until, believe it or not, until the 1960s to resolve it. And so now that it's resolved, we can happily use our logistic function, and um, that's the history of it. Thank you.